Congratulations, this right here just hit your bank account. Now, you possibly traded your time for money. If you have a job or a career, you maybe have an investment that absolutely took off for you. Uh, you maybe had some consultations, you maybe provided a service. Uh, whatever it was that you did, you now have what we can call currency that's hit your bank account. I've been involved in countless amount of consultations. I've been involved in masterminds and I've seen countless, uh, countless amount of, amounts of hours of how to make money, whether it's online or if it's in the real world or in the digital world, right? I don't think we have an issue when it comes to making money. I think that one of the biggest issues, at least in my experience from what I've seen talking to people is we have a hard time keeping that money. We have a hard time knowing what we're actually going to do with that money. If that's going to be investing it, if that's going to be saving it, if that's going to be using it to pay bills. If you are in the situation right now where you, or where your money is just running rampant and you have no idea how to structure it so that you don't have too much month left at the end of your money, in other words, you're not upside down on your bills every month, then this video is for you. And you're probably thinking, okay, what exactly can I do with my money? So I'm gonna set up this video in two different ways. I'm going to speak to those of us that have jobs and we have a fixed income, and then I'm going to set it up for those of us that maybe have our own businesses and that are entrepreneurs, and then I'll give you some commentary along the way. So there's really something simple because I really wanna make sure that we simplify this as much as possible, known as the 50, 30, 20 rule. And that's going to be the basis around this video, around the 50, 30, 20 rule, but I want to structure it a little bit differently from how you've possibly heard it. I know that this right here kind of gets spoken a little bit differently depending on who you ask, but this is what's worked for me in my experience. And again, I'm gonna ask some commentary along the way because I know that you're gonna have some questions of why I structure my personal finances this way. And that's going to be 50% of your income, you want to use it toward your living, 30% of your income, you want to use it toward investing, and then 20% of your income, you want to use it toward leisure. But if you wanted to break that up, you can do a 10 and 10 on that 20, and you can maybe do half leisure and then half into some type of, some type of maybe reinvestment into your business, which is where the entrepreneurship part comes into play. But Let's first dissect that 50% rule. That 50% rule uh, or 50% portion of that rule is, let's say you make $5,000 a month. The most basic thing that you can do when it comes to breaking down your expenses is see what your overhead is every single month. What's my rent? What are my bills like? What's my cable? What's my utilities? And just put that out on a spreadsheet if you like to have it on a screen, if you're like me. I like to just write it down, maybe on my phone or on a clean sheet of paper and see, okay, is are my bills moving at all? Because this is something that you wanna see. Are you trying to hit a moving target? I know that for a lot of us, let's say if we are still renting, then you have a moving target and that moving target is your rent. Sometimes the rent can move anywhere between 100 to 200 bucks depending on how your landlord structures, uh, maybe your, your water or utility, is that all included into, or maybe do you have an internet package all included into your rental payment? Or if you are planning on moving and you're planning on possibly relocating, but now you're kind of up in the air, the new location that I'm gonna be at, is it going to be more expensive? Is it going to be less expensive if I renew my lease? Whatever that is, try to find out what you need every single month in order for you to just bare bones, stay alive and make those payments. Cover your three walls, that's going to be, or your three pillars. That's going to be the four walls in your house, pretty much the roof over your head. That's going to be your food, so that's going to be your water, that pretty much your shelter. And then three is going to be your transportation, that's your gas, your insurance, whatever that number is, pause the video, finish watching the video, and then work those numbers backwards. That's going to be 50% of your income is going to go toward that, which now leaves us with the 30%. The 30%, the way that I was originally taught this, or the, the, the way that I originally learned this, was the 30% would go toward leisure. But I had an issue with having so much of my money go toward leisure, because in my experience, I don't necessarily need as much leisure. I don't need the three vacations a year. 
I don't need the fanciest upgrade. I don't need to have a staycation whenever I'm feeling down. As a matter of fact, I actually prefer being at work and working what I'm doing now with my businesses than actually going on a vacation. But again, that's just the way that I'm wired. So I flipped the 30% and I put it toward investing. What, what do I invest in? I pretty much try to have everything automated for me as simple as possible. I am probably the worst person if you ever want to speak to when it comes to the fanciest new investment because I just go with what works. And for me, I like to have a lot of my funds. As a matter of fact, I'd say 70, maybe 80% of my portfolio is going to be, when it comes to stocks, is going to be um, with SPY. I just want exposure to the S&P 500. Again, that's just me. The majority of my risk goes into the businesses that I build and that's where I find my excitement and that's where I like to have a majority of my focus. I'm not the guy that wants to analyze a bunch of uh, data or data, however you wanna say it when it comes to the stock market. I'm someone who wants to uh, just focus on my businesses just because I feel that I can get a, ba a better rate of return both on my time and on my money when it comes to throwing that back into my business. Now, for my entrepreneurs out there, what can we do with this 50, or what, what, what can we do with the 30% rule here? With the 30% part of this rule, we can go ahead and put 15% of that, have some exposure either if you're saving up to buy some more real estate, or if you're looking to get into the stock market, or if you want to feel a bit more, uh, we can say riskier, and you want to maybe swing for the fences, you can maybe take a look at some crypto projects. There's enough of them out there, we won't cover it in this video. And then the other 15%, you can go ahead and use toward your business. Or if you wanted to kind of flip that around even more, you can slice that 30% into uh, a little bit more than a half, maybe an 80-20 split on that, and you can do 20% 20, uh, 20 of that 30% split. You can throw it into your business and maybe things like marketing, maybe things like branding, maybe things like ads, retargeting, maybe going out to hire some new help. And then the other 10% could be, again, more toward a long game if you're looking to play in that stock market or if you are looking to get into real estate. And then the from the 50, 30, 20 rule, we still have the 20% and the 20% is going to be the leisure. Now, when it comes to leisure, I do believe in having vacations, I do believe in having a good time, and I do believe in um, using some of that money to kind of decompress from what you go through in the day-to-day. -day. If you are an employee and you're someone that maybe has uh, two weeks out of the year or four weeks out of the year where you can have that PTO, you can go ahead and use some of those funds and possibly use it toward, toward, some, toward some type of holiday savings, tour some type of vacation, or if you're still looking to get out of debt, you can use that 20% to work your way out of debt, which is an, uh, an issue that I see that a lot of people leave out when it comes to the 50, 30, 20 rule. This is assuming that someone doesn't have debt. Someone, If someone does have debt, the 50, 30, 20 rule, I would start shifting around some of the percentages, which is why I kind of uh, pre-emphasized in the beginning of the video that you don't necessarily need to be constrained to these numbers right here. Now, one last thing that I did want to point out because it happens in just about any video that you make when it comes to finances, when it comes to percentages of how you want to divide your finances, and that's going to be, Irv, how can anyone live on 50% of their income? My city's too expensive, or where I'm living, I, it just, the, the math doesn't add up. So you have two things you can swing here. Number one is you can play around with the ratios to see if maybe you need to bump that up to 60 or maybe you need to bump that up to 70. But I would rather you work the math, uh, the math the other way and that's try to increase your income and lower your monthly debt at the same time. That's going to be the best position that you can put yourself in because it's going to speed up the process that you're going to be able to raise enough capital to again, fund your business if you're looking to scale a business or if you're looking to max out your Roth IRA every year, uh, if you're looking to add additional funds to your 401k if you have that type of plan or if you're looking to retire early if you're going off of the FIRE method, right? Um, in, my, in my experience from what I've seen is usually when we get caught up with the ratios of, well, let me just go ahead and bump up how much money I need or what the ratios are for how much money I need for my living expenses, I think we cut ourselves and we set ourselves a little too short when, it, when, we're, to, when we're looking at the overall picture of how much income potential we could be looking at. So that's just a little trick that's going to help you bring in more money because it's 
kind of going to force you to think outside the box to see how you can generate another source of income if you haven't done so already. So there you have it. If you found value in this content, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Join the official community. Don't forget that anytime I'm not posting on here, I'm posting over on the Inside with Irv Show, which is my podcast style channel. So if you like what I have going on over here, you'll love what I have going on over there. Once again, I appreciate you guys checking me out. Till next time, everyone, I will see you in the next video.